Here we've got the sky as our roof. The earth as our seat. The crickets and the frogs as our background music. It's a good place to be sitting. There's a story in the commentary of it. When King Ashoka was still a young prince, there was some question as who was going to be the next king. And they went to see a fortune teller. And the different princes were sitting around on various seats that they had brought with them. And Ashoka hadn't brought his seat, so he was just sitting on the ground. And the fortune teller said that the prince who was sitting on the greatest seat was going to become king. And Ashoka reflected on, well, he had the, the earth as his seat. the same seat that the Buddha was sitting on on the night of his awakening. When he was teaching his first sermon, he was seated on the ground. The Dharma is best found out in nature like this. As the presence of human beings is cast away, even though we've got other people sitting around us, nature seems so much bigger. And try to make your mind big as well. They talk of making your goodwill as deep and as solid as the earth. People can try to spit on the earth and dig little holes in the earth and say, be without earth, be without earth, but the earth is so much bigger. Their efforts don't really amount to anything. You want to make your goodwill that big. No matter what other people say, whatever they do, just think of it as little tiny people spitting and urinating on the earth. But the earth is so much bigger that it has no effect. There's another passage where they talk about making your mind as surface-free as space. Space has no surface and nobody can draw anything on it. So no matter what other people do or say, it doesn't have any effect on your mind. It doesn't stay drawn on your mind. Think of it that way. Because when you're out in nature like this, try to take on some of the dimensions of nature in your own mind which the daily concerns of being around people, not just individual people, governments, cultures, society at large, they seem very small. You want your mind to be bigger than that. There's a passage where they talk about leaving your village and going out into the wilderness and holding in mind the perception of wilderness. and realizing that when you hold that perception in mind, the affairs of human beings, the affairs of the village, really seem very small and inconsequential. You can actually make your mind empty of those concerns. Because you realize that what you want is bigger than that, bigger than what other people can do. You want a happiness that's solid. You want a happiness that has no limits. It's not limited by your body, not limited even by your imagination. We think about the governments in the time of the Buddha. And the only reason we know anything about them at all is because, in some cases, the kings were connected with the Buddha himself. But what their policies were and what the kings did, what they accomplished, there's really nothing compared to what the Buddha accomplished. His mind was much larger. His aspirations were much larger. So he was able to put up with the, the work that was required for those aspirations. We're talking this afternoon about wanting a happiness that is totally blameless. And someone commented that the work of doing the meditation just seemed very boring. We 
because you've got to go through the work in order to get to this larger goal. If you don't do the work, the, the, the idea of the goal is just an abstraction, it's just a perception. But it's through the work of the meditation that you make it a reality. So even though we're focusing just on the breath, just on our own bodies, here in the present moment, remember that our purpose is much larger than that. This is our path to something really big. When the Buddha gives the image of nirvana, it's, a, it's an image of being limitlessness, and nirvana means unbinding. The mind is freed from its limitations, starting out with this, the limitations that are made by greed, aversion, and delusion. And it goes deeper, the limitations of space and time, the limitations of your sense of who you are. It's bigger than all these things, just like the elements. In the Buddhist way of looking at the physical world, the fire element, the water element, the earth and wind element, they penetrate everything. Not just on earth, but everywhere. And so the image of the fire that's gone out is not that it's disappeared or gone out of existence, it's just bigger than just a little fire. In the same sutta where the Buddha talks about the image of the fire, he also talks about the mind of the, the enlightened person as being like the ocean, totally unfathomable. It's actually bigger than the ocean, because the ocean is in the physical world, and this is something beyond the physical world. So it's good to come out here and get a, some perspective on things. We have no walls around us. Let that be a symbol. Whatever walls you're creating in your mind, let them fall away. Have a sense of awe at what the Buddha taught. Human beings are able to do this. Look inside themselves, and as they go deeper and deeper inside, it doesn't get narrower and narrower, it gets bigger and bigger. Let that be your perspective.